Meg. Happy Sunday. We are alive. Live from Guanacaste. It's Sunday afternoon. I think I've probably done that shtick at least 20 times in the last two and a half years, wouldn't you say? Yeah, um, Jeff? Jerry? Tennis? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just get so confused about names these days. I've been calling my dog my baby's name, my baby my dog's name. It's difficult. Always, have... always my mom called in the end my name. Exactly. Said Ricky, Aro, Alvaro, Mauricio, Dad, Kenneth, Ben, come on. My mom was the same with me and my sister. Sometimes she threw the dog's name in, sometimes the horse. Just kidding, the horse was never there. Calling you guys up on the Rhythmail Facebook page. Okay, here we go. We are live. We've got some people watching. I see Mr. Levi Moody is tuning in, saying "Hola, Mama." That means that my uh, my little my little baby is watching, or is Kobe having a nap? Levi, tell me, tell me in. Give me the give me the the moment to moment of my child. It is Sunday, the day that I am here with me on my own, using both of my hands, completely free of child responsibilities she is home with her father me and Cody Kobe are watching so both of them are watching Rhythmia is joining in obvious throwing in the, the phone number there so if you're watching and you have questions and you're really excited to come to Rhythmia but you still aren't sure you're on the fence you're watching this to get more insight let me tell you that I bear no impact on your experience here at Rhythmia it is very beautiful and tranquil my spazzy self will not assist in that part, but we would love to have you, so please make that phone call so you can ask all the questions. Teresa is saying, Aho, Jennifer Sudini is watching. Hello, beautiful soul, beautiful soul, hello back to you. I hope that you are doing well after our last crossing of paths. Who else is watching here? Um, so, we're talking about grains today, and let me tell you, I, like you guys know if you watch, I choose my topics weeks in advance. I send a list of ideas off to my amazing marketing team in Malibu for Rhythmia, and then I come up with the content Yeah, the last minute. Usually the morning up, I think about what I'm gonna do. So this morning, I was like, great grains, what was I planning? And I guess what I was planning was to just talk about grains and. Uh, a few different ones, the different cooking techniques and all that because there are so many. And even myself was a little bit confused today because I keep my grains in the cupboard in jars like this. Like, you know, mason jars that you buy. This is like obviously reused, upcycled jars. I have tons of these in the house that I, that I store my food in just to keep them nice and fresh. And this here jar was the mystery jar. I could name what all the other jars of things that I had in the cupboard were, except for this grain. Because it looks very similar to many different things, and I wanted to be really specific. So this is, it looks like a cracked wheat, but is it frica? Is it um, vulgar? Who knows? I'm, I'm ending the day with saying that it's vulgar. I don't remember ever buying bulgur or using bulgur, thereby putting the leftovers in a jar, but at some point I did. I watched me this morning trying to play Identify the Grain. Fun game. The good thing is, is most of these whole grains, and we're only talking about whole grains today, can be utilized in very similar ways, so it's not that big of a deal. The only big deal if you have grain confusion is if you're worrying about gluten-free versus non-gluten-free or gluten-full. Levi says, definitely vulgar. Like, you have any idea. Um, but that's the only big reason why you would need to be concerned about whether or not it's you know what grain is what. If you've got a gluten-free issue, you want to make sure you're getting gluten-free grains. So we're going to talk about a few here today and just a couple of really easy uses for them. This was also a fun walk down memory lane for me because when I did one of my first culinary nutrition training courses, um, official ones, on the books back in two, the 2011, I think, to, to maybe 2012. I'm so thirsty today. It's so warm. Um, hey Meg, your food is amazing. I just went grocery shopping to make some of your recipes. Woohoo! Jen, did you get the cookbooks? I hope you did. Lisa Carol saying hello. Um, yes, so back when I was doing the training, one of my assignments was to do a whole assignment on grains. So I've created this little chart. This was in 2012. Grains haven't changed much at all since then. 
So you can see it's a great one. It's got the list of different grains. It's two pages long. And I've made columns for, is it gluten-free? Do you have to rinse it before cooking? How to cook it? And then how long to cook it? So this is a really helpful, handy dandy handout that I will um, make into a PDF and put into the comments here. For sure, I will do that for you guys so that you have that. I mean, just if you wanna try different grains, even you might not even know that there are this many different whole grains, right? Like amaranth. I've only used once in my life, but it's a great one. It's a great source of iron, actually, so it's a good thing to have if you're following a vegan diet. Um, I've got here listed barley, which we probably all had in some sort of soup at some point. Buckwheat, which is contrary to the name, buckwheat. It is not wheat, it's actually gluten-free and it's a seed. Brown rice, white rice, wild rice, obviously those are all gluten-free. Quinoa, gluten-free, actually a seed. Faro, which is a type of an ancient grain, an ancient wheat. Um, teff, which I believe is also a great source of iron and protein. Millet, couscous, which is not a grain at all. I have it on here, but it's not. It's actually a type of pasta, couscous. Spelt, which is an ancient wheat that a lot of people that have uh, wheat allergies can handle spelt. Kamet, um, which is very similar to faro, and bulgur. I have all of those on here. So a lot of these are wheat derivatives and types of wheat, um, but they're different and they have a little bit different tastes. Some are more bitter, some are more sweet, some are more smoky. Um, but I just wanted to talk about a few of those today. So what did I have in my cupboard? These guys, to start. So here I have farro, and this is one that I really like. Um, you cook, I just cook it like I cook pasta. It looks like a big rice grain. Um, it's in, in a lot of Italian dishes, farro. Um, but it is really, really interesting in texture. So when you cook it, which I have some cooked over here, it gets like really poppy, like it, it pops in your mouth. Um, the texture is really good. So here, let's compare the, the raw one to a cooked one. It just, it, it pops up quite a bit. Um, but I love the texture of it because it really pops in your mouth. And what I, like, I use this in place of rice when I'm making grain bowls, um, just as a side dish, you know, put it with some ghee. But another great way to do it is I like taking the texture of these guys and just tossing them into soup. This is a really, really great way to have that. Um, and the thing that I love about all of these grains is you can make a whole bunch and then freeze them. So what I do is I'll, I'll cook them a ton, well, far more than I actually need for a meal, and then I will store some in the refrigerator for meals later on in the week. Like I said, I'll just add it into things. It can be a side dish into my soups, whatever. Um, but then I'll freeze it also to, so that it's cooked already. Because some of these grains take like an hour to cook. Like wild rice takes forever to cook, like 55 minutes. Brown rice takes like 45 minutes. So you wanna, you know, might as well bulk prepare it. So before I get into more of these specific grains, let's talk a bit about what makes a whole grain because some people are still pretty confused. So I made this amazing little diagram today. Clearly grains are not multicolored and rainbow, but I love rainbow colors. So that's why I did it. So I've just drawn the three parts of the grain. So when you have a whole grain, you have the outside layer, which is the bran. So we all know that bran is high in fiber and that helps you stay regular. The mid layer, big part here is the endosperm, and then the center part is the germ, or the wheat germ. So you know if you've probably seen or heard about people buying wheat germ. So these grains have long been processed in many different ways. When you are um, looking at these three different components, you know, separately, the bran is the outside here, high in, high, in, high in antioxidants, B vitamins, and lots of fiber. Then when you look in the middle part here, or the endosperm, that one's got, um, the germ, sorry, the endosperm is, um, very high in carbs, protein, and a small amount of vitamins and minerals, and then you've got the, the germ here, which is high in protein, minerals, fats, and B vitamins as well. So when you think about refined refining wheat, which is um, what white bread and all of the white, 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 white stuff is, that's refined wheat, what you're doing is you're removing the bran and the germ, so all you're left with is the endosperm. And what did I say the endosperm was? The endosperm is full of carbs and very few vitamins and minerals. So that's why we want to eat more whole grains for all the other good stuff. So that is my very official lesson in whole grains for today. So let's talk a bit more about these specific specific stuff. Jerry Hinge is saying hello everybody. Jen saying yes I got your cookbook. So wait. So what other, what grains do I have? So quinoa. If we don't know what quinoa is by now and you don't know how to say it, where have you been for the last decade? Because quinoa became the, the big superfood, gluten-free grain of choice in the last 10 years, but it's actually a seed. 
comes in many different varieties. I, I have, oops, sorry, I have the red, oh, here we go, these ones. I have the red quinoa here and white quinoa. You can also buy black quinoa. You can buy tri quinoa, which just the three of them mixed. They do all have slightly different um, taste um, profiles, but I use them interchangeably. And you can use that in anything. I do a quinoa porridge, which is just a matter of cooking the quinoa and adding sweet components like milk and cinnamon and raisins. The base of a grain bowl, you know, I use it here at Rhythmia as the base for our tempura, so it's gluten free instead of using a bulgur, which is a wheat. Um, but just be one thing to keep in mind when you're using quinoa, rinse it first, because even if it says pre-rinsed, I would still rinse it because it has a pretty nasty taste if you don't rinse it ahead of time. It just has that really bitter soapy taste, so give it a good rinse before you cook it, and you cook your quinoa one part quinoa to two parts liquid. You can do that with uh, broth, almond milk, water, whatever you want to do. I always cook mine most of the time with water so that I can keep it in the leftovers in the refrigerator in that bulk preparation method that I was saying so that I can use it in sweet or savory later on. So quinoa is the easy one. Then I have all these other guys. So I talked about farro already, so that's this guy. Back here I have buckwheat. So as I mentioned, this is actually a seed. It's not a grain, but it's used as one. Um, this is what it looks like raw, whole buckwheat. Um, there's tons of different brands available. It is gluten-free. You can buy buckwheat flour. So I'm sure you've heard about buckwheat pancakes. That was a big thing a few years back. Um, pretty quick to cook, but you want to make sure if you're going to use it in, like you can use it different ways. Um, if you're going to use it in salads, like I like using farro, quinoa, um, buckwheat, dry, uh, like cooked, and then just use it in cold salads and things like that. You want to give it a good rinse because it's quite, it's quite mucusy when you cook it. So what I've done here is I've made a buckwheat porridge. So if you've been to Rhythmia, you know that we're always doing chia seed porridges and things like that. But this is a buckwheat one. And it's just as easy as doing a quinoa porridge, uh, I'm sorry, a, a chia porridge, except for it does have one step in cooking. But what you do is the night before, you combine the raw buckwheat, so these guys, these seeds, combine that with a bit of chia, some, some water and coconut milk, vanilla, cinnamon, all that good stuff. You combine it, let it soak overnight in the refrigerator, just like you would a chia pudding, but then in the morning you throw it into a saucepan and just cook it till you get to your desired consistency. And as, as you soaked it overnight, the buckwheat will start to absorb some of that water and coconut milk, and then as you cook it down, it will absorb a little bit more and you get a really nice texture. So it's like this, where's this spoon? So it's like this lovely porridge like consistency and you can add more or less milk yum 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 almost like a rice a rice pudding and then in the morning once it's cooked you pour it into a bowl and then you can top it um, with some extra stuff so we got you can add some coconut some granola maybe you want a little extra protein power throw on some spirulina and a pretty strawberry now you have an amazing high protein delicious alternative to chia. I, I've gotten, gotten kind of sick of chia pudding, like the straight chia. It sits quite heavy for me these days, so adding in this light, lighter seed of the, the buckwheat, I like, and it's really, really good. So that's a great way to use your buckwheat. There's also tons of recipes out there for making buckwheat granola, which is really good. Buckwheat cluster granola, really good, like cacao and buckwheat is a really good combination. Um, so you can look that up online. Really great way to use buckwheat. Jerry says, quinoa. Shannon says, I cannot wait. I'm coming soon. Shannon, when are you coming? Can't wait to see you. We're super, we're booked up like for the next couple of months. Raymond Cote is saying bonjour from Northern Ontario. Okay, next grain. This one here, sorghum. So you can cook this like any other grain and use it cooked in many different capacities. It, it, um, obviously it's like little balls of deliciousness. But my favorite way to use this is to pop it. And I've popped it in a pot using a bit of oil in the past this morning. Decided to test it out. And we made it like microwave popcorn. Come on. <laughs> Look at how cute these are. What is that? It, this is this. Oh, really? You pop it. So it's sorghum. Oh. So it's this little grain. It's, you can pop them like popcorn wow. into the world's tiniest. Like, look at the size of that compared to my, I'm not going to show you that finger now. It's when I figure skated over. So it's ugly. But look at it, the size compared to the size of my pinky finger. It's the tiniest little pork popcorn you'll ever find. And all we did this morning, and I'm not going to say it was the easiest task because I burnt two bags first. I just took a, a paper bag and I threw these in here and dry just a small amount into a paper bag and then I threw it in the microwave for a minute, minute and a half. And then we got these amazing little popcorns. 
and they taste like popcorn. You can just throw your butter and sea salt in there, but they're just like, they're like popcorn for Barbies. <laughs> it's the cutest yeah. thing, right? So you don't need to go through the trouble of doing messing up a pot. If you've got paper bags on hand for school lunches or whatever, you can pop your popcorn. And then you could, you could pop a whole bunch and like eat out of your bags like you're, when you're watching TV. So that fun, right? It's new for me. It's super fun. Oh then you can take this to a next, next step and like season this popcorn after the fact with some, you know, ghee or coconut oil and some curry powder or, or coconut oil and cinnamon and a bit of sugar for a sweet version. You could do anything with this that you would do with normal popcorn. Fun, right? So that's a really great uh, thing about sorghum. So this other ingredient that I, the one that I couldn't identify, I think ended up being bulgur. And you can use that in many different ways. It's traditionally always just used in um, quinoa, but what I did here is I just made a grain bowl or grain plate. So bulgur is my grain, and then I've got all my mixed vegetables and stuff, and then you can make any sort of dressing or a big schlock of hummus or whatever you want to do, and you've got uh, a bulgur base to your grain bowl. If you're getting sick of quinoa and rice, mix it up, try the bulgur. Of course, we've got good old rice. We've got brown rice or white rice, base of our rice and bean dish here in Costa Rica. And then there's so many other grains out there, I would encourage you to try them. Um, I wrote down a couple of things. So quinoa and farro, obviously super high in protein. Um, well, maybe you didn't realize that farro. Farro, farro, potato, potato, that it's super high in protein also. Teff, like I mentioned, high in calcium and iron. I did make another note. Um, oh, that this one, farro, with the poppy texture, my favorite, is actually one of the highest when it comes to fiber. So if you're trying to add more fiber to your diet, go for the farro. And amaranth, as I mentioned, that I don't have here, it's super high in iron. And the amaranth and the teff, and the, the teff, like if you think a quinoa kernel is tiny, you haven't seen teff or amaranth. They're even tinier little balls. And they actually do not expand much when you cook them, amaranth and teff. So it's a tiny, tiny little grain, but really, really good and interchangeable and, and using in all of these different ways. So that's all I wanted to do for you guys today, just give you a bit of a, an overview about different grains. Get out there and explore here. And then we only use quinoa and rice, but you have like such an abundant offering out there of these ancient grains and you don't have to be scared of them. Most of them, you can cook them like you would cook pasta and you'll end up with an okay finished product. And by cook like pasta, I mean just fill a pot with water, bring it to a boil, throw them in and then keep an eye on it. Another thing, keep an eye on it. Cause last night I did not boil over onto the stove and make a huge mess with like glutinous water all over the kitchen floor. I did not do that once, but I did it twice last night because I have a new stove and a new kitchen and I put the water on, put the pasta or the fire in and I walked away, huge mess, cleaned it up, put it back on, walked away, same thing twice. So pay attention. Ugh. Shannon says, I've never even heard of that. I'm, I'm not sure what, which, this? I know, it's the coolest thing. This one. Louisa says, hi from Australia, looking forward to next month. Shannon's watching from Alaska. You're so educational. Thank you, I'm trying to be educational. Cause sometimes me just cooking here, being a smart ass, isn't really helping you guys with anything. So I thought I'd do a little bit of an educational uh, talk today. So what are we at? We're at 220, I'm gonna wrap it up. Let's see, what is our topic for next week? Dun, 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 dun. Facebook Live next, ooh, Sunday, December 15th. We're gonna talk about cookies. We're gonna be cookie crazy. So I did a Facebook Live a couple of years ago, I think it was two years ago now, about cookies. We're gonna do it again, um, in case you still have some holiday baking to do, or unbaking, because we're gonna talk about raw cookies also. Um, tune in for that, that's next Sunday. In the meantime, have yourself a beautiful week. We're gonna clean up here, and I'm going to have something to eat, and then head down to teach the orientation welcome class here at Rhythmia. We have an amazing group here again, sold out this week sold out next week then we're taking a little break for the holidays and then we're i think we're sold out all through january so if you're interested in coming make that call now because we are going to be waiting list we're going to have a waiting list y'all all right have yourself a beautiful sunday kenneth adios adios thanks for tuning in share Bye, with anyone that wants to know about grains who does it bye family